Straight ahead on WBKB News at 11, there was a group of bike riders cruising around town today. Plus, a car show in Lincoln brought back the 1950s. And ACC hosted the 19th annual Scramble for Scholarship at River's Edge Golf Club. We'll have those stories plus your local weather and sports. The news that affects you starts now. From Rogers City to Tawa City and all points in between, this is Northeast Michigan's award-winning news team. We are your source for news, weather, and sports. We are WBKB News at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Neil Liwanag. Well, it was easy like Sunday morning for bike riders as locals gathered for a slow bike ride. Grab your helmet and let's take a cruise around town. <laughs> this afternoon, bike riders from throughout the community join Harborside Cycle and Performance Locker for a slow ride. All participants enjoyed a ride around town that started at Harborside Cycle and Sport. The seven-mile bike ride was a free event, and the folks at Harborside Cycle and Performance Locker welcomed everyone to explore the beauty of Alpena. Just enjoy Alpena, share the camaraderie that is bicycling. To check out the things that we have, um, again, we have an amazing bike path in the area that, um, you know, some people don't know all the ins and outs and the turns. So as we gather as a group and we can lead people around and through the rides, um, it's also a great opportunity to introduce and take groups of people to local businesses and establishments. The slow bike ride was a perfect way to celebrate and encourage healthy living for all ages. Casey Stutzman and myself have uh, common interests and the uh, same type of vision and philosophy when it comes to health. It's a way to promote wellness and fitness and doing it as a family, doing it as a community. For more information on future bike rides and events, visit facebook.com slash harborside cycle or facebook.com slash performance locker. In Alpena, Neil Wanag, WBKB News. The 1950s are back. It was a trip down memory lane with the 17th annual Lincoln Lions Antique and Classic Car Show. It was a day of fun and great music from the 1950s with several vintage cars and even some modern vehicles as well. Aside from checking out at all the cars, the community also got a chance to eat brats, hot dogs, hamburgers, and drink a little bit of pop. For only $15 to enter, participants showcased their cars and all the money went to a good cause. Well, the proceeds go to our philanthropy work here in Lincoln. The Lincoln Lions are a, uh, not a fraternal organization, we're a service organization. And we try to assist those who are in need, those who maybe are less fortunate than some of us. For more information about future events with the Lion Lincoln's Club, visit e-clubhouse.org slash sites slash Lincoln MI. Over the weekend, Boy Scout Troop 97 hosted a hot dog lunch fundraiser just outside Mr. Ed's IGA grocery store. In order to raise money for a camp to Mackinac, Troop 97 got together to sell hot dogs for just $3. Each member of the Scouts needed $80 to pay for the trip, but not all the kids are able to make that possible. So, Troop Scout Master Ethan Scoose researched the idea of a hot dog stand and proposed it to the committee. Um, not all of our kids are going to be able to just come up with $80 right there on the spot. So um, he, he, he came to Mr. Ed's and he asked them permission to be able to do this in their parking lot. And the kids jumped on board. Today's hot dog fundraiser raised $100 for the troops as they moved closer for their Mackinac trip. And for more information about future Boy Scout Troop 97 events, please call Scoutmaster Ethan at 989-335-0692. Yesterday, Br Brush Creek Mill welcomed Katherine Stevens, the author of Tux and Me. Locals who attended got a glimpse of Stevens as she read several passages from Tux and Me. Stevens also answered questions and gave a brief insight about the process of writing the book. Tux and Me is a story of an unlikely friendship between a runaway slave named Crispus Attucks and Gabriel, a young Quaker. Stephen says her inspiration to write this book is to, is to her concern of young children not being able to really understand the background of the United States. I didn't believe that um, our students had an idea of the history of our country. Not just the, the names and dates, but the actual people and what they went through in order to 
live in that time period. Tux and Me is now available online and at select local bookstores. Golf, food, and good people sound like a great mix for a fundraiser, right? Well, the Alpena Community College did just that this last night, yesterday, River's Edge Club, and here's how the event all came about. The Alpena Community College hosted the 19th annual Scramble for Scholarship. Alumni, staff, and people from all over the Alpena community hit the green to help the students at ACC. Since its inception, we've raised over $314,000 and provided hundreds of scholarships for students who might not otherwise receive them. Entry fee for the event was $90, and that covered a cart, a round of golf, and of course, lunch. Net proceeds benefit scholarships for Alpena Community College students. The top golfers were awarded with prizes, but it was all about the ACC students. True winners today um, are our students who are the beneficiaries of the scholarships. I want to thank Penny and Barb and uh, Sue Fitzpatrick and Nancy Coombs and the rest of the foundation trustees. They do a great job. Um, if it weren't for them, a number of students wouldn't be able to uh, attend college and because they can, some of their lives are transformed uh, for the better. A lot of community support and it just pulls people together and it demonstrates the support that there is for the college and the community. Very significant and much appreciated. This is the largest foundation that ACC hosts and every year the event brings in about $18,000. In Alpena, Neil Iwanig, WBKB News. Coming up next on WBKB News at 11, a domestic couple finally gets married in Southfield and find out why it's not a good idea to check your 401ks. All that and more next. Welcome back. In state news, the two Michigan women who legally challenged the state's ban on gay marriage exchanged vows Saturday during a ceremony in Southfield, Michigan. Federal Judge Bernard Friedman, who overturned the state's ban in 2014, performed April DeBoer and Jane Rose's wedding ceremony as the couple made history in the legalization of same-sex marriage. The couple exchanged vows in front of approximately 300 friends and family members. DeBoer wore a cream-colored wedding dress and Rose a black tuxedo. With their children and DeBoer's father as escorts, they walked down the aisle to, to the late Beatle George Harrison's Here Comes the Sun. In 2012, the couple sued the state, which at time bared them from joining, adopting each other's children because same-sex couples couldn't marry in Michigan. Their case grew into a challenge to a 2004 Michigan constitutional amendment that recognized marriage only between a man and a woman. About 300 same-sex couples were married last year when gay marriage was allowed in Michigan for about 24 hours. In June, the U.S. Supreme Court said same-sex couples have a right to marry. In your Money Watch, today might not be the best time to check your 401ks. The Dow and SP are opening in negative territory for the year. What sparked that sell-off? Well, first, worries about China's economy. Also, falling oil prices and what it means for the big energy companies. And then there's uncertainty over when the Federal Reserve will raise interest rates. The retailer Madewell is recalling about 50,000 of its sightseer sandals. A metal part can come loose and break through the bottom of the shoe, causing people to trip and fall. You can return the sandals for a full refund. And if you're looking for a little glamping trip this summer, now you can camp with a high-end RV even if you don't own one. The startup Outdoorsy has 2,300 RVs listed on its site. Some for just $65 a day, the more luxurious ones go for $650 a day. If you're heading to the pump, GasBuddy.com and AAA of Michigan helped us find the highest and lowest gas prices locally and across the state. The lowest price for gas in Alpena is coming at $2.71 at Murphy USA Station. The highest is $2.72 at Marathon. And across the state, the lowest price at the pump is $2.19 in Sterling Heights. And the highest price is coming in at $3.79 in Romulus. There's still much more to come on WBKB News at 11. Kyle Logan will be in with sports, and I'll be right back with your full weather forecast. Stay tuned. Thanks for joining us. It is now time to look at the weather. Today was, coming in right now, at 81 was your high, and your low was 56. Normally, it's 76 degrees with the 53 of low, Record was 95 degrees back in 1947, and the low record was 1934. 
The sunrise was at 6.54 a.m., sunset at 8.28 p.m. Take a look at your current conditions right now. It's a cool 63 degrees. We saw a little bit of rain this afternoon at late into the evening. Winds to south, 27 miles per hour. And your uh, radar right now, a little bit of rain system coming in. You can see that green all over Alpena. And looks like we could see that continuing tonight with thunderstorms and a chance of showers uh, continuing. 57 degrees with a south wind of 10 miles per hour. And to, uh, the chance of showers, 66 degrees, southwest winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And tomorrow night, sh cloudy showers likely at 54 degrees, west wind at 10 to 15 miles per hour. And here's your extended forecast. Tuesday and Wednesday, bring out your umbrellas with uh, 68 degrees is your high for uh, Tuesday. 52 degrees is your low. Wednesday, 68 is your uh, high and your low at low 50s. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday looks to be mostly sunny. 72 degrees for Thursday and low of 52. Friday, a little bit of 8, 78 degrees and same thing, low at 53. Saturday, 77 and a low of 58. Now it's time for today's photo of the day. Today's photo was sent in by Gail Baller of Alpena. Now this is the photo Gail took of a beautiful sunset in Alpena. What an amazing photo of the orange sun setting into the darkness. Thank you, Gail, for sending us this photo. If you have a photo you'd like to send us, email it along with a short description to news at wbkbnews.com. In your health watch this evening, millions of Americans are not taking care of their contact lenses, putting them at risk of serious eye infections. A CDC survey found 99% of lens wearers engage in at least one bad habit. Doctors say keeping contact lenses, lens cases longer than three months or topping off solution instead of dumping out the old raises the risk of an infection. British researchers warned that dieters who eat on the run may be more likely to gain weight rather than lose it. They tracked the eating habits of 60 women and those who ate while walking around or otherwise distracted were more likely to overeat later. And a new Harvard study suggests breastfed babies may have a higher rate of pollutants in their blood. According to researchers, industrial chemicals that are linked with cancer and immune issues appear to build up in babies who are exclusively breastfed. Doctors say these chemicals are regularly found in a person's blood and can stay in the body a long time. But the study author says there is no reason to discourage breastfeeding. In national news, three Americans who helped stop a gunman from opening fire on a high-speed train overseas held a joint press conference Sunday. Brian Webb has more. Three Americans who tackled an armed gunman on a high-speed train in Belgium last week were reunited in Paris Sunday. U.S. Airman Spencer Stone, National Guardsman Alex Scarlatos, and their friend Anthony Sadler were hailed as heroes during a press conference. French officials say the Americans, along with two other passengers, risked their lives to disarm a gunman who French media reports in this photo to be Ayub El Khazani. A visibly right injured Stone recalled the moment he sprang into uh, action uh, on the Amsterdam to Paris bound train. It looked like it was jammed or it wasn't working and he was trying to charge the weapon and Alec just hit me on the shoulder and said let's go. Scarlato says his initial reaction was out of gut instinct. I feel our training mostly kicked in after the assailant was already subdued. Cell phone video shows the 26 year old Moroccan man hogtied on the ground. Officials recovered an arsenal of weapons. Sadler believes there is a lesson to be learned from the ordeal. The gunman would have been successful if my friend Spencer had not gotten up in times of like terror like that to please do something. Don't just stand by and watch. The suspect is believed to be an Islamic extremist who spent time in Syria. Sports is coming up next, but first Kyle Logan is here with a preview. Kyle? Neil, tonight in sports, the Tigers look to even the series with the Rangers and Tiger Woods seeking his first championship in some time. Also, big tennis action over in Cincinnati and that big event you heard about yesterday was a big success today. Lots upcoming, so come on back. Sports is next.
Today was the big day. Just about a half hour away in post, and the Vikings hosted a very special event all to raise money for their athletic program. The goal to raise money for athletic busing. The gym inside Posen High School was buzzing and completely packed, all in support of Vikings athletics. The raffles, the chicken dinners, the desserts, and the live auction were all big hits. The boosters received a ton of support, and at the end of the day, the staff was very appreciative of everyone's efforts. It's been a big success. The Sports Boosters has done it again. Uh, we've got such a small school here, but our Sports Boosters is one of the best in the whole state of Michigan. And uh, they just did a great job putting this on. We would like to thank the sponsors, anybody who delivered stuff for us, uh, you know, who donated uh, goods to this. It just was an amazing job that everybody put on. The Posen Sports Boosters raised a ton, and the hope is that the stress on many of the coaches and players will have been lessened by such a great event. As each day passes, the Tigers are given more and more opportunities to make up ground in the AL wildcard race. The team was in good spirits returning home, but losing two, for two of the last three games of this series with the Rangers left a lot, to be a lot to be desired. The goal on Sunday, even the series and not drop another game. The youngster Matt Boyd on the mound for the Tigers, looking good early. Fans both Delino DeShields and Adrian Beltre as he cruises through the first. Bottom half, he gets some run support. Cole, Cole Hamill's on the mound, Ian Kinsler on first, and Miggy makes things happen. He would single to right, Kinsler racing around third. Shin Su Chu attempts to throw him, but air mails it into the home dugout, and Ian is given home plate. The Tigers go up one, Rangers nothing. Top three, Texas gets on the board with this blast from Chris Jimenez to left, and we are tied at one. One inning later, the Tigers would go back in front, though. James McCann on third after a one-out triple, and Jose Iglesias would bring him in with a single right back up the middle. Detroit two, Rangers one. But it's downhill from there. Top six, two on and none out. Mitch Moreland drills this one down the right field line. Both runners come in, and Texas would take a 3-2 to two lead. Texas would tack on another in the eighth via solo shot from Mike Napoli, and that would be more than enough. Rangers win 4-2 and take the series 3-1. Afterwards, the skipper spoke about his team struggling to find those clutch hits. There's not much you can do. I can't say, hey, go get a hit. You know, hey, there's runners on base. Go get a hit and drive them in. I mean, that's not how baseball works. So uh, you try to you give them the information. Uh, Wally and David Newhan give them the information in terms of what to, pre what to be prepared for when they go to the plate. They they work on their swings. They take batting practice. They take their soft toss or tee work. They're obviously good hitters. They have good numbers. Um, but right now, we're not getting the big hit to drive in the big runs. Yeah. The Tigers will now look to regroup as they head to Cincy tomorrow for just a one-game makeup with the Reds. Final round of the Wyndham, Tiger Woods, that championship red. He began the day two shots back, a decent day until he hit the 11th. Third shot here on the par four, and he gravely mishits. Shoots it way past the hole. Onlookers are simply speechless. Now is fourth, another chip and it would be another poor result. Woods would triple bogey, and that would eliminate him from contention. The big mover on the day, the old-timer Davis Love III, a huge eagle here on 15, his second on the day, gives him the lead, and he would take that lead into the clubhouse. Jason Gore, the leader at the start of day four, a chance to tie here on 18. A great effort, but it was just a little bit left, and DL3 would take home his third Wyndham Championship, and at age 51, becomes the third oldest winner on the PGA Tour. Now let's see how they finish behind him. Davis Love, your champion at 17 under. Jason Gore comes home in second at 16 under in a three-way tie for third. Charles Swartzel, Paul Casey, and the American, who also hit an ace during the final round, Scott Brown, all finished tied at 15 under. Championship Sunday in Cincinnati at the Western and Southern Open. Djokovic v. Federer, late first set tiebreaker. Fed serving up for the old serving volley. A small rally ensues at the net, and eventually Novak puts up a freebie, and the Swiss would slam it home. He takes the first set 7-6. Six. Now serving for the match, second serve, high hopper, and it's just a little bit long for the Joker. At 34 years of age, Federer takes down the top player in the world in straight sets. Now to the women, Serena Williams v. Simona Halep. First set, Serena with double break point. She returns off net. A small rally ensues. That is until Mrs. Williams unleashes a massive forehand cross court. She would take the first set 6-3. Second set tiebreaker, match point for Serena. Prepare yourselves. This one was easily one of the longest rallies of the entire match. Back and forth. That is until a drop shot from Simona Halep was close, but it just wasn't there. Williams takes her second straight championship in Cincy via straight sets. All of these big-time players getting some hardcore practice, gearing up for the U.S. Open, which starts on the 31st. 
And Neil, some big news in college football. The Associated Press released their first preseason poll. Uh, Alabama's at number three, TCU at two, Ohio State a unanimous number one, but Michigan State is at number five, so still well news around here in these parts. Well, let's not forget University of Michigan with my man Jim Harbaugh, who, you know, I have experience with Jim Harbaugh coming from San Francisco Bay Area, so he's going to turn that team around, and I tell you what, watch out for the Wolverines as well, so the Michigan hope. State and the Wolverines will be very good in the next couple of years. That's dope, but he's, they're not even on the top 25, so they'll have to move into that this year. We'll see what happens, Kyle. Thanks. Coming up next on WBKB News at 11, we'll tell you where the oldest man is now. Keep it here. Next. Welcome back. Here's a great story out of Japan, the oldest man in the world. Meet Yatsuato Koid. Guinness World Records has formally recognized on Friday the 112-year-old Koid as the oldest world's oldest male. Koid, who lives in the central Japanese city of Nagoya, received a formal designation in a presentation with relatives and city officials. He said his secret to a long life was not to overdo and to live with a flow. His favorite food is bread. Koid shed some tears after he received the certificate. He was born on March 13, 1903 and worked as a tailor. He became the world's oldest man after the death of Sakari Momoi of Tokyo in July at the age of 112. So, bread, is that the secret to living over 100, Kyle? It may be. I mean, I'm going to have to start eating a lot more bread. And I think I really liked what he said there, that he just lives life by a flow. He just kind of goes with everything. And I think that's how everyone should kind of live their life. Yeah, I definitely. No stress and just eat bread. I think that's, the, that's really the uh, secret here. And apparently. if the end result is to get to 112 years old, I think I'll do it. So, I mean, and remember, you can read more about our broadcast stories and get the scoop on other news items online. Just visit WBKB11.com for sports, weather, and news updates anytime, day or night. Or add us on Facebook at Facebook.com slash WBKBTV. Well, that'll do it for tonight's show. Wake up with Erica Fernandez tomorrow morning at 6.30. Good night, everybody.